Good day to all you awesome grade eights out there. Welcome to today's lesson and the warmest of greetings to each and every one of you. I'd like to welcome you to our Worksheet Cloud Grade 8 Natural Sciences lesson. If you have a question during the lesson, send an email with your question to grade 8 at worksheetcloud.com. I am Mrs. Ernston, the Worksheet Cloud Grade 8 Natural Sciences teacher. So welcome to those of you where you have joined these lessons. And if you are just joining us now, welcome. It is so good to meet you. What I really would like you to do is make sure that you have some paper ready and a pen or pencil or some colored pens and pencils to write with. It is so important just to record the work that we do in today's lesson. And I've got a couple of little activities I'd like you to do together with me as we go through the lesson. So today's lesson is all about learning about chemical reactions. So what is a physical change? And what is a chemical change? And how do we represent what happens in a chemical reaction? And in a chemical reaction, how do we identify the reactants and the products? So to start out, let us look at each of these pictures. And I wonder if you are able to work out which one of these is the odd one out. And as we progress through the pictures, I wonder if you are able to work out what could be a possible theme or topic for these pictures. So here we have potatoes that have been cut into chips. Here we have an egg. So we have a raw egg that's being broken into a frying pan and the egg is cooking. Here we have an ice cream melting. Here we have a pot of water boiling. Here looks like we have a rusty chain. Here is a bowl of eggs that have been whisked and they're yellowish in color. And this is what happens if you whisk eggs for a very, very long time. So this is raw eggs mixed together and this is raw eggs that have been whisked together. And here is a cup, if you look really, really closely, this is a cup of milk, but the milk has started to go sour. So there are many ways to group these pictures. And you can look at each of these pictures and work out which one is the odd one out. And you will be correct because I haven't given you any criteria in which to group or classify. So I would just like you to spend some time looking at these pictures and working out which pictures would you clump together and why, or would you group together and why, and which pictures would you, you leave out. So, so I'm trying to see how do you classify things? How do you group things? So before we get on to the answers, I want to cover what are physical changes. So in previous lessons, we've covered the particle model of matter and specifically what happens when we change state. And we also had a look at what happens when we heat water and what happens when we cool water. So here is an example in the top corner here we have of an icicle that's solid that is melting. There's a droplet of water there that's a liquid. So we are having a look at a change of state going from a solid to a liquid. And this diagram shows us the example of water. So here is a molecule of water. And you will notice that in each of the pictures we see the molecule of water. And in a liquid, we see the molecules of water, and in a gas, we see the molecules of water, and in a solid, we see the molecules of water. So when we have a look at the phase changes, the chemical properties is not changing. Water is still made up of H2O. 
So H represented by these two small white circles and O represented by the larger red circle. So the only thing that is changing is the particle arrangement in each state. So when we move from solids to liquids to gases, we are looking at a physical change. The chemical properties of water don't change. So liquid water is still water. Ice water is still water. Water vapor is still water. So where are we going with this lesson? So one way that we could group the above pictures is to say whether or not we saw a physical change happening in the picture or whether or not we saw a chemical change. So when we take a potato and we cut it into smaller cubes and smaller pieces, we are physically changing the shape. It is still a potato. There is no change in the chemicals. When we take an egg, whether we have a raw egg or boiled egg or scrambled egg, it is still an egg. We are not changing the chemical properties of that egg. When we take an egg and we whisk it, it is still an egg. When we take an ice cream that was a solid and in the hot sun, if that solid starts to melt and the ice cream turns into a liquid and drips down your hands, that is a physical change. We're changing states. Milk that has started to go sour is still milk. Fresh milk versus sour milk. We have not changed the chemistry or the chemical nature of it. It is still milk. If we take water, water is just boiling on the stove, is just changing shape from a liquid water into a water vapor, into a gas. We are still dealing with water. So the chemical properties of all of these substances here do not change. The one that did change is rust. Because this iron chain reacted with the oxygen in the air. And this brown substance you find on the outside of the chains is iron oxide. So let's go and learn more about this chemical change. Have you ever wondered what a raw egg would look like without its shell? Well, we are going to use a chemical reaction to strip away the shell of an egg without breaking the egg. So how awesome was that? And I would really love for you to carry out this experiment at home. So I hope after this lesson, you're going to get all these materials ready and you can see for yourself if you are able to see what does an egg look like inside if we take away the shell. So the materials you'll need for this is an egg, a glass or a container, and some white vinegar. Carefully place the egg in the glass, so be very careful not to crack the shell. Cover the egg with vinegar and wait for a few minutes. Can you see anything happening on the surface of the egg shell? So the shell gradually becomes covered in bubbles. And those bubbles are a sign that a chemical reaction is taking place. So if you have a look closely, there you can see the bubbles on the surface of the shell. So now you're going to have to leave the egg in the vinegar for four to five days. 
but you will definitely see something after day one. So you need to complete the rest of the activity after this lesson. What you might find is you might need to add a little bit more vinegar if the reaction starts to slow down. But remember to return to the activity by the end of the week to see what's happened. So if we leave the egg for four to five days, this is what we should see on about day four. And then in the container, you should find that there may be a brown foamy layer floating on the vinegar. Carefully scoop the egg out of the vinegar with a spoon. Touch the surface of the egg and write down your observations. What has happened to the eggshell? So you should find that the egg is going to feel soft and wobbly and in actual fact be very careful not to bounce the egg because the egg is still raw and if you bounce it or drop it the egg is going to break and you're going to have raw egg everywhere. So all that has happened in this reaction is the shell has disappeared because it has dissolved. So in its place you should find that there's a powdery coating. So please be mindful that this egg has not gone through any physical changes. We haven't heated it, we haven't cooked it. So the egg is still raw. All we have done is taken away the egg shell. So you can rub the powdery coating off the egg and you can place it in some clean water. And what does it look like now? So it should feel quite rubbery. And if you look at it really carefully, you should be able to see the yolk of the egg on the inside and the white of the egg on the outside. But it's probably not white. It's probably gone a yellowy type of color. So in the eggshell activity, the eggshell is made up of calcium carbonate. And the eggshell reacted with the vinegar. And vinegar is known as acetic acid. And that formed calcium acetate, carbon dioxide, and water. So looking at this description, I wonder if you are able to work out what the little bubbles were that were on the surface of the eggshell. I would like you to pause the video now and write the word equation for this chemical reaction. So we have the eggshell plus the vinegar. Those are our reactants. That's what we had at the beginning of the experiment. Then it underwent a chemical reaction, which took a few days. And we were left with calcium acetate, which is the browny stuff that you might have found floating on the surface, carbon dioxide, which was the bubbles, and water. So when we have a look at chemical reactions, this arrow always represents a chemical reaction. Everything to the left is known as reactants. Everything to the right is known as products. So in this equation, the eggshell and the vinegar are the reactants, the calcium acetate, the carbon dioxide, and the water are the products. During a chemical reaction, the reactants are used to make new products. So the atoms in the reactants become rearranged and they form new compounds, which are the products. So how would you define a chemical reaction? You can use these keywords to help you. Reactants, products, bonds, rearranged, atoms, molecules, and new compounds. So if you'd like to pause the video now 
and use these keywords to help you come up with a definition. You can. So here is a definition that you can use. A chemical reaction is a rearrangement of atoms in which one or more compounds or elements are changed into new compounds. I would like you to make a list of everything you can remember about chemical reactions. It was wonderful having you in the lesson today, Grade 8. And if you have any questions, please can you email your question to grade 8 at worksheetcloud.com and we'll get back to you as soon as possible with the answer. So awesome, Grade 8. This brings us to the end of our lesson. Thank you so much for taking time out to watch the lesson. I'm greatly appreciative of your passion and enthusiasm. I hope you go off and have some fun learning about eggs and eggshells and chemical reactions. This lesson was very proudly brought to you by Worksheet Cloud, and I would like to thank them for bringing the lesson to you. And then just a reminder, if you have a question, to grade 8 at worksheetcloud.com.